Unauthorized opinions expressed on the internet would be censored. We are live. We are live. This is real. <laughs> Welcome back to Unauthorized Opinions, uopod.com. Like, share, subscribe. It's pure propaganda and it's super cringe, by the way. I literally went to the polls with nothing in mind. I saw a can of orange soda in the parking lot. <laughs> and it's I was like, yeah, there we go. An unopened can of orange soda just chilling <laughs> in the parking lot. I was like, yeah, I got to vote for Trump, dude. Your podcast sucks it's mental mate it's absolutely mental i'll be honest i thought it was kind of offensive when you talk so much about the loch ness monster political climate and andrew treat yourself okay especially if you start i don't know getting getting in good with homeless people unauthorized opinions streaming everywhere at uopod.com authorized opinions podcast rumble youtube x Spotify, Google, Apple, all of the podcasting, podcastables perhaps, and we've got a great episode here for you, so you'll want to hopefully subscribe and support the show on patreon.com slash uopod. This is a, an interview we did with a volleyball player from San Jose State University. She has a teammate who's a boy, um goes by Blair Fleming, born Braden, but a six foot one guy on the women's volleyball team. Hits harder, jumps higher, it's faster than all the other girls on the team, of course. So we did an interview with one of the teammates who is speaking out and joined a lawsuit against this person. They're still playing, but there's been a bunch of forfeits against San Jose State University. A bunch of different teams don't want to play them because of this issue. This, you know, athlete that shouldn't be there so we've got that interview coming up we'll give you an up-to-date recap of what's going on in that situation but before we get to that i want to jump on over to england where my friend lewis brackpool is from he'll he's going to be uh heading over this way soon time so expect some content with him but he posted this video from the uk about a, you know, it's a training video for what what to do if your co-worker starts becoming radicalized, starts sowing anti-immigration opinions. And we know this is a podcast where we would never uh, express any opinions that the government wouldn't like. So Lewis says, if we can blow this up a little bit, you won't mind, will you? This is a real training module from a local council in England on what to do if somebody who works there shares, quote, anti-immigration views. The answer, according to the module, is to call the counterterrorism police on them. So, this, this drawing looks very English already. Let's see what it has to say. Let's get started. Let's get started. Just start. This is Mr. J, a <laughs> young man of 17. He lives with his parents in the county of Hogshire. He is known to his local nature reserve staff, as he often uses the bird hides and public viewing areas there. He is quiet and withdrawn and very rarely speaks to staff, but is polite when he does so. He is known to attend the local college. What do you mean? What is this? He is of. This is the problem with English people. They invented the language, but they let it get out of control. He is of 17. He is known to attend the college or does he just attend the college like there can be no certainty in our language here and has taken part in organized activities at the nature reserve as part of his college look at the person they're portraying there this guy with his capri pants on let's that's just these are things in the background that people who make this sort of stuff think is normal Oh, it's just a guy who's wearing capri pants and women's shoes. Taken part in organised activities at the Nature Reserve as part of his college course. <laughs> Completely normal. We've got a very multicultural place with purple hair at the front. This is all stuff that... Why would you put this in if you weren't making fun of it? They're not making fun of it. They want to be serious. Purple hair person in the front is serious. The depiction of how you want... <laughs> <laughs> society to look
Nature Reserve staff become concerned after noticing the contents of some leaflets which have been left in the viewing hides on the reserve. These contain anti-immigration views and argue that British tradition and identity is under threat from multiculturalism and that Islam is fundamentally opposed to British values. So we've already conflated immigration and a worldview. Immigration is not a worldview. Any immigrant can have any worldview that they, they want or desire, but Islam is a specific set of morals and viewpoints. So I don't know how they've already conflated this. They've already made it so that if you're making fun of immigrants, you must be, you must have a problem with Islam, but you could be an immigrant from Sweden and you wouldn't be Islamic or anything like that. So this is a weird thing to say, weird thing to conflate. Is it wrong to have a problem with Islam? Or is it, is it wrong to say that, you know, the values of a certain religion don't mix with a country that isn't Islamic. I don't know if it would it be weird if in Turkey or Malaysia or something they said we don't agree with, you know, Judaic or Christian values. So we I'm against that when it's a population of however a majority Muslim population would they be condemned for not agreeing with Christianity or Judaism or uh, Buddhism or something, I don't think they would. I would think it's it, it's weird for somebody in their own country to say these values that are clearly at, at odds with our values, it's wrong or mean or, in this case, dangerous to oppose them. I don't know. That's, that's just my opinion. He's... The temperature's going up. By Friday, he's a murderer. <laughs> Staff also find stickers on litter bins in the reserve. These contain similar slogans and statements to the leaflets. But this isn't offensive. Any person who any person who would read, you know, we're under threat from multiculturalism, is that offensive to you or is that just somebody's opinion? They shouldn't be vandalizing things with stickers. I would I would say that, but like is that offensive? If somebody had a sticker that says immigration is the solution, I would think that's wrong, but I wouldn't be like, oh, I am aghast at these stickers. A review of CCTV cameras shows uh. that it is Mr. <laughs> J who has placed the stickers and leaflets in the reserve. When questioned, he admits his actions, but is defensive and uncooperative. He defends his viewpoints. Unbelievable. Staff at the Nature Reserve are concerned with the content. So the, one of the leaders of the Nature Reserve is a woman in her 40s with purple hair, I'd like to point out. We'll just, and, and then this guy who ha, who is very low on tea, let's say. This is who they put as the normal people you should be listening to. ...of what Mr. J is distributing, and believe he may be vulnerable and or susceptible to being radicalized. They make a prevent referral, and they <laughs> include images of the stickers and leaflets. Once assessed, it is decided that channel support is appropriate. A counter-terrorism case police officer is assigned and visits the family along with... An ethnically gender-diverse woman from the counter-terrorism unit is at your home to now question your son on why he disagrees with the government. That's what this means. The social worker from Children's Services. Mr. J admits that he has been spending more and more time online looking at discussion forums. He explains that, at <laughs> first, he just discussed history and fantasy computer games with other users. All he used to do is discuss video games. That's how it starts. Are you playing chess or any sort of game based on history? You might be a problem. Those games might teach you about history and what really happened and what these beliefs may have spread across the world. You know? Again, from the other side... Might you say that Chris, these games taught about Christianity and the Crusades and that they're evil? And then the other side might, side might say they might have taught you about Muhammad or Genghis Khan coming from east to west across uh, the world, spreading their philosophy by the faith. This is just history. And of course, this is the problem. They can't have you having a basis for your knowledge or else you're a threat for some reason. It's really... Strange, I like how it's just <laughs> chess pieces versus, I don't even know what, is that little dogs or something? But he was then encouraged to visit other sites which shared anti-immigration, 
anti-Islam and anti-Semitic and far-right views. and cons- Just everything. Anti-Islam and anti-Semitic and far-right views and anti-immigration and conspiracy theories. So anything. Anti-Islam would likely be more right-wing. Anti-Semitic would be likely be more left-wing. But then also, you're also far right, but also you're a conspiracy theorist, which could be anybody, or anti-immigration, which could be, you know, any sect of p- political viewpoints at all. I mean, communists don't exactly like immigration, um, in, unless it's, you know, to be employed by the state. Conspiracy theories. He says that he's been feeling very lonely, depressed, and direct. This kid's wearing a communist shirt, that's good. Directionless at college. But he feels like he has friends and a shared purpose amongst some of the users on these forums. And that's it. This is this is how the British, you know, government class, however you want to call them, executive class, think of people. First, you're just playing a computer game innocently. Then you're just on a forum talking about the game. And then, bam, anti-immigration, anti-Islam, far-right, conspiracy theories... Who do you think knows more, just as a basis, and you can practice this in real life, you can experiment with this in real life, because I have. Who do you think has more base knowledge of worldviews, um, politics, and history? Is it a person who subscribes to everything that's been espoused in this view, that all this stuff is conspiracy theories? Or is it a person who's played like an old strategy game about history, whether it be civilizations or total war or something like that. It's the person who's played the games. They under they have a base knowledge of what has happened in history because what these games do is they say, this is what's happened up to history in this point. This is what is happening. And you have a chance to like, intervene and change things depending on how you govern things. Even Risk, you might get playing a board game Risk, you might get a cursory knowledge. Watching old movies about uh, history, about Gladiator and, and Troy, they're not the most, they're not completely historically accurate, but they give you some knowledge about what was going on in the show Rome, stuff like that. The people who believe in what is being put out in this video say being against Islam or being against Judaism in any form is hateful and we can't have that. You need to be checked in on by the government. So because you have gr- views that whomever is in in charge of this office disagrees with, therefore they think that the government should come and essentially threaten you, intimidate you about the views that you have. This pers- The worst thing that this person has done, who's 17 by the way, a child, is commit a low form of vandalism by putting stickers on garbage bins that he probably shouldn't have done. Ha- putting out leaflets on a car is not a crime, um, as far as I'm aware. But the person in charge of this place thinks that you should be investigated by police if you basically disagree with them. That's where it's at in England. All right, so let's catch up on the, the volleyball stuff that we're talking about now, the, the stuff at San Jose University. I thought, you know, a little segment about uh, what's going on in England right now is worth worth touching on because we're going to be seeing Lewis soon. Um, San Jose State University, they are the team with the transgender athlete on them, and now four teams have, uh, have backed out, including Utah State is the most recent, Utah State's women's volleyball became the fourth team to cancel a game against San Jose State University after it was revealed that they have a male athlete on their team. The third one in their conference to drop out, joining Wyoming and Boise State, and another team from a different conference, Southern Utah, dropped out. Now, you would think that this would be a problem for the conference with three teams just forfeiting, allegedly for no reason. But as you'll see in this interview they very much know the reason. Everybody very much knows the reason. And they're not really doing anything about it. In fact, what you're going to hear in the interview with this girl named Brooke Slusser, a volleyball player, who is a teammate of the transgender player, who's just a guy, remember? Transgender in this context means a guy who believes that he's a girl. Um, the school has treated the other girls on the team like they don't really matter as much. Now, of course, I don't know. I'm not there. But from what I was told was that everything focuses around the feelings and how the 
the male player is doing. And I posited this position to the girl that I interviewed. If this person, uh, Blair Fleming, Braden, left a state where this isn't allowed and went and played in a state where this is allowed, this being him playing on a girl's team, either that was completely by coincidence that his family happened to move there, even though he's an, uh, of adult age, as we might say in England, either that was completely a coincidence and a happy coincidence so he can now play on the girl's team, which he identifies with, or he thinks that that previous state was wrong, their opinion of not allowing him on the girls' team is wrong, and the place that he went is correct and agrees with his view that he should be allowed to play on that team. Now, connect this to the video we just watched, and what if the place that he went to was like, these views that you're espousing are dangerous. You have anti-women's views, you have anti-biological uh, realism views, you can call it that or whatever you want, and you have views that are incompatible with us over here. We think you should be investigated by the government. That's how it sounds coming from the other side, is we disagree with your views, we think they're dangerous, you need to be investi investigated by the government. That's communism, that's fascism, no matter how you want to spin it, that's insanity. Because... Again, if the person moves from a place where they don't allow it to a place where they allow it, or vice versa, you could just be like, well, you agree with something that we don't agree with here. So this is dangerous. You're pushing dangerous rhetoric around gender, dangerous rhetoric around sports, about women's rights. And we don't want that here. You need to be investigated. So you can apply that anywhere you want, and it's always crazy. But the people who are applying this don't seem to understand that they think that they're always right and so it's okay to say anything they want about this side they're crazy far right anti whatever conspiracy theorists and it's okay to say that but if you say that about them then it's mean and it's hurtful so basically you are bullied into a certain belief system and viewpoint and if you disagree with it at all you are deemed dangerous to the rest of people and to society that is literally what communism is Take a certain section of society, demonize them, say it's okay for the general population to demonize them because confirmed they are evil. And anybody that disagrees with you is dangerous. So that's how that works. And that's what they're that's what this school is doing by proxy by saying this is okay. They're saying that everybody else who who disagrees with this must be crazy. You must be crazy if you don't think a guy could be on the girls' team. And you would think that the school would do something. No, they seem to only care, allegedly, about the transgender student. The conference says that this is up to the teams. This is the teams matter if they want to participate or not because, you know, this conference allows it. And the coach has recently acted like he doesn't know what the big deal is. And this is from Fox News, the San Jose State volleyball coach with the transgender player on his team, says politics are playing into the forfeiting. Hmm, I want, what a surprise. He walked up to Emily uh, tonight, which is, I think, a different a coach on the other team, and I was like, should I say thank you for playing us? I seriously meant that because, of course, we're disappointed that we're losing opportunities to play. But it's not just that we're losing opportunities to play. It's the people choosing not to play us. And that's very unfortunate when it comes to these young women that have earned the right to step in, step on the court and play. He said in a post-game press conference. So this guy does not want to mention the fact that the reason that they don't want to play is because there's a boy on his team. He says, oh, you're taking opportunities away from the girls on our team. He's completely ignoring the obvious problem, which you will see the girl on the team, Brooke, says all the girls have a problem with it on the team. Everyone knows that. The management knows that. They just don't seem to care. Also, it's good, It's interesting for you to see what she says about the locker room situation. They're defending this point of view. Otherwise, you'd have to assume they would leave their position, or at the very least, they, they don't think it's a big enough deal to leave their position. But by default, it sounds like the people who are running the school and ru running the athletic program believe in this enough to, to keep it in place or to not make a fuss about it at all. But they won't even say what it is. The coach won't even identify what the problem is. He won't even come out and say, you know, these teams are 
forfeiting their games against us because they disagree with us having a male athlete or a transgender athlete on our team. I disagree with that. I think you're. I think it's fine, and you're taking away opportunities from this girl. Instead, he just he just acts like everything we've just discussed. Like you're the people with the problem. You're taking away opportunities from these girls. What's the problem? All you're doing is hurting them. Your beliefs are mean, and they're hurting other people. Whereas my beliefs, which I can't mention by the way, are sound. And if you mention it, then you're also hurting. <laughs> there's there's nothing. There's no way out for you in this situation. All right, so keep in mind in this interview, this was filmed uh, about a week ago. So that's why I wanted to update you guys. There, there's four teams now, and the coach is making you know, weird excuses for it. And pay close attention to what she says about the locker rooms, what she says about the other girls having a problem with it. And the meetings are the big part. The meetings are the creepiest part about how the school is treating the girls on the other team. And so you're, are you a junior? Sorry, or are you a senior now? Yeah. Okay. All right. Thanks, Brooke, for joining me. Very happy to speak with you. How are you doing today? I'm doing great. Thank you for having me. Of course, no problem. Big news that came out last week, I believe, that you're joining the Icons lawsuit against the NCAA, the Title IX lawsuit against, I guess we can just sum it up as uh, males in women's sports. Would that be fair to say? I think that's very fair to say. <laughs> So you transferred from Alabama, was it, to SJSU, San Jose? Yes. Okay, and when was that? So I left Alabama going into my junior year, so that would have been 2023. Okay, and then when they... So I I, I wrote a bit about you already, uh, I think a couple articles, and... What I gathered from some of the information that was put out is when you were put on the team or when you transferred to the team, sorry, you were completely unaware that uh, there was a male athlete on the team. Can you sort of go through like the was there any process that you might have had some inkling? Did you hear anything beforehand? And the person's name is Blair Fleming and uh, the biological male, we have to say. And so was there any inkling or any rumors you had heard about before you started playing that there was this person on the team? No, I had heard nothing. So I got here and obviously had no idea. <laughs> and just with the way I was raised and where I'm from, I've never really had to second guess if someone is male or female. So coming into everything, I've also grown up playing with some of the best players now that are in the nation. So it's just, I went out, I played, and if someone's good, I'm going to play against them but there was just something when I got to the first practice and I was like there's just something different like the power of, of Blair's swing was just something that I'd never seen before and yeah, that, oh go ahead yeah sorry and so I was like that's insane but okay like obviously I'm not going to ask questions why are you hitting it so hard like if I'm put on a team, I just assume that I have all the information. I'm not second guessing anything. And then obviously I didn't find out until about two months after being here. And it kind of was just like, it all makes sense now. So he could hit the ball harder, probably jump higher. I'd imagine And I don't think a lot of people know that the women's volleyball net is lower, right? I think it's seven, four to men's seven, 11. Yes. Okay, so that's an obvious advantage that I think is recognized inherently in the sport. It'd be like if they lowered the WNBA rim by a foot, basically, or seven inches or whatever. I think that'd be an admission of, you know, the vertical men versus women have. Um, so you notice all this stuff, but I, I want to mention something else that I read was that you were put in a room with, was it three other people and one of the people was this guy? Yes. So was there any, like, was it just, that just randomized? No. So when I was transferring, obviously you have to find somewhere to live. And my coaches were like, oh, or there's three girls on the team that are looking for a roommate. Like they need a roommate. Would you want to move in with them? And I was like, yeah, that would be amazing. Like I'd rather transfer and be able to live with teammates, be able to like get to know people a lot better than to live on my own. That sounds amazing. Like I'll do that. So is that on campus or in a house or an apartment somewhere else? It's in an apartment right off campus, yes. 
willing to play in other games and tournaments. Now, this is this is strange, I think, and a lot of it can be read into it, but I read that you found out that Blair Fleming specifically requested to be roomed with you. Is that true? How did you find out, and was that just two people to a room or a group? So, I heard that it wasn't me specifically. It was the admin asking specifically who Blair felt comfortable rooming with. And I'm not sure who else was on the list. I can't speak on that. I just knew that I found it very odd that everyone else was getting switched around with who you get roomed with on away trips. And I somehow kept getting roomed with the same person. And usually you get switched around with people that you might not be as close with to get to know people and try and open up to new people that you wouldn't usually on a team. And I just kept getting roomed with the same person. And I just found it so odd, but didn't question anything again. Still, I didn't know. I had still had no knowledge of anything. I just found it very, very odd. And then when I found that out, I was like, that makes a lot more sense. And yes, it was just two people to room. So I'm now with my <laughs> microphone. Um, so we were at the part where you were talking about um, getting roomed with Blair on the road. Now, why was it that you, you said that it became obvious to you once you found out that he'd been requesting you? Why is that? Were you guys close friends? Were you maybe the nicest person? What's the What do you think is the reason behind that? Well, it ended up being Blair just being roomed with the people that lived in our apartment right now, which I found very odd because every other group of girls that was on our team, if they lived together, they weren't getting roomed together. And that was just like the thing of it because they wanted to have people branch out and talk to different people, especially because it was preseason. So you, like I said, you kind of get roomed with a lot of different people to get to know them. They're brand new to the school, especially me being a transfer. I was like, Oh, I'll get to like, this will be my chance to get to room with a lot of people and like really get to know people that I haven't really sat down and talked with. And then after seeing everyone getting roomed with all of these new people, and then I just kept getting roomed with the same person. I was like, that's odd, but okay. Like I didn't really ask questions or anything. Mm -hmm. So once you got there and you've been rooming with this person and you've started to notice these things, um, it, it's sort of, I think it was like after seven, six or seven games, this news started coming out about this person and the school started removing him from highlight packages and, and post game recaps and everything. Was this sort of stuff in the works? Um, what you can or cannot say um, was you're joining this lawsuit. Were you talking about it already? Did it happen a certain amount of time into the season or did, had you decided going into it, you're going to do this? What can you say about that? Um, so me joining the lawsuit, I was actually asked, they reached out to me and I just thought, if anything, this is a way that I can use my voice. Like this is an experience that I'm going through and something that I just, to my bones, don't agree with. It's not right. And it really wasn't a hard decision to make at the end of the day. So I think just being given the opportunity to be able to be the voice for a lot of people that are too scared to say something meant a lot to me. And also being able to be the voice for so many girls that are going to be playing in division one sports in the future and not wanting them to have to deal with this. So that's the basically some of how I ended up joining and it wasn't really until about five, six days before everyone else found out that I joined, that I'd started getting contacted and the interest of in maybe wanting to join and kind of figuring out the details and everything of that and what would that, what that would entail fully. Mm -hmm. So why, I mean, this has got to start to be getting awkward for you. I think you've played what, at least two games since the news came out. Have you had an interaction with Blair? as like what's been going on behind the scenes to, to the extent that you're comfortable sharing, but has he, you know, come up to you and have you discussed anything with him? Because, you know, you haven't made any public camp, uh, comments about him personally, but I think the obvious sentiment here is this is unfair and that's what you're telling me. And that's what I believe. And that's what obviously 
tons of people believe. I don't think it's a weird thing to think this is unfair. I think people just don't want to say it for some reason. So has anything changed since all this went public? Um, nothing has really changed. I don't really want to speak on my interactions with Blair, but all I can say is we just show up to the gym every day. I'm going to give everything that I can give for my team because I think that's the respectful thing to do. The same that they've been doing for everyone else this entire time. So nothing's changed. Hopefully nothing changes in the future. And I hope we can just have a good season and be mature and do it for other people and not ourselves. But mm -hmm. that's really all as much as I'm going to want to speak on that. Yes. Oh, it's fine. I understand. I would think, though, that once Blair starts understanding what the people on his team are saying, that he's – and I don't want you to try to speak for him. I know legally that would put you in a bind. But for me, when somebody transfers across the country, like I believe he did as well, and then you come to a place uh, at this school where you've got you know a bunch of girls coming together, obviously you guys want to win, and you are winning – he would have to think that the place he's coming from where that is not allowed is wrong and then therefore go to a place where they think it's right. So I would wonder how much this plays on a person to think, hey, maybe am I wrong about this? Have you thought about maybe if you're the person who's wrong in this regard? Yeah, I mean, I can't speak for Blair, but there's the big thing to me is everyone's opinions were already known this whole time. Everyone knew how, where everyone stood on this. And I think that's the hard part. So like I said, we just show up every day because there's so many amazing girls on this team and I couldn't imagine not being there for them through this experience. And that's why you show up every day to the gym and you just give everything you have. Because, I mean, it's a lot of our senior seasons. A lot of my best friends that I've made on this team were seniors. So it's like we only have three, four months left of ever playing volleyball again. So I just, you have to make the most of it. And it's like I already transferred once. I can't really transfer again. <laughs> that's kind of out of the books for me. So it's just showing up for those people that like you love and support and working hard for them. Yeah. Cause you've got to imagine that's one of the first questions people ask is why are you still playing? And I think you answered that there. Why do you think without naming anyone specifically, other women in general are afraid to speak up about this? I mean, I think it's not an easy thing to do because it's grilled into everyone that it's not a topic that's okay to talk about. It's not your opinion that matters. And I think a lot of people get scared because they're like, oh, well, I'm getting my school paid for from these people. Like I'm, I'm able to play division one volleyball. My dream since I was a little girl to be able to do this and I'm here doing it. I don't want to like step on anyone's toes and make anyone mad by s saying anything that could upset someone that's a superior and in control of my schooling and getting school paid for and my playing time. And, all of that. So I definitely think it's just a fear because it's like everyone that's above you is telling you things like you shouldn't be talking for Blair. You should need to make sure the other person's okay. Like, and not thinking about, are we okay? Mm -hmm. Is that something you've come across before? Like as a girl, has there ever been another time in your life where it's just like, don't worry about yourself, worry about other people's feelings. In this sense, do you know what I mean? Like, I wouldn't go and be like, and I know this isn't your situation, but with the, well, I guess we could bring that up. What about the locker room situation? What's happening with, can we talk about that? Like, how does that work? I mean, everyone's in the locker room. So that's that. It's the team locker room. And yeah. Do you not feel uncomfortable with that? I would rather not talk about the locker room situation if that's okay. <laughs> that's okay. I just feel bad for you. I feel bad. And I, I recently wrote about the uh, the Virginia Tech swimmer and, and the situation there and how 
she explained she, her words were that there basically wasn't a by default there was not a women's change room at the NCAA championship. So I just worry about that. Um, are you able to talk about, has there been any, any direction given to you by the school, whether it's support or asking you not to say anything? Have you have any communications about this at all? Um, we've had meetings and it's a lot of just checking in on Blair. And <laughs> I think that's something that then we were like, what about us? And I, like, I'm just going to speak for myself, but yes, we have had meetings about it. And with everyone on the team, sorry? Yes. Like all at once? Yes. Okay. And they're like, if you have issues, you can come and talk to us about it. But at the end of the day, it's mostly just saying, don't be the person or you can't be the person to, I don't know what words they use to identify Blair's gender identity. Like Blair needs to do that for himself, not anyone else. So you're not allowed to have an opinion on what this person's gender is. That don't be the person to, to declare what this person's gender is. Is that the general sentiment? Yeah. That's, what do your parents feel about this? Because there's another girl, and I point to the screen. There's a screen off to my right, <laughs> not to an imaginary person. Um, there's another girl. I, it was at Nevada. Her mother spoke out. And on one hand, I'm like, okay, I understand, I guess, why the, the daughter herself isn't speaking out. But her mother spoke out. She said that uh, you guys are playing them, I think it's in, in November, and she doesn't want her daughter playing against you guys which is what people have claimed about two other teams, but there's no confirmation about that. What do your parents have to say about this? Have you talked to them about it? I mean, yeah, me and my parents have had many conversations about this whole thing, but I mean, I couldn't ask for better parents. I mean, they're here supporting me through everything. They're the ones that were like, we understand this can be scary to join, but whatever your decision is, we're, going to be here for you and obviously they fully support my decision to join the lawsuit they think and so do i that this is a lot bigger than just me this is just me being put in the situation that i'm in right now and i should want to be able to speak my story to help so many other little girls that could be coming through wanting to play division one sports in the future like i kind of said earlier like a big thing I've talked about with them is like, just remember like it's so much more than just like me right now or my team. Like it has everything to do with the generations coming for women's sports and being able to protect them from ever having to go through this. So I guess I, in the weirdest way possible was lucky enough to be put in this situation. And I guess me specifically, because I feel like God put me here because he knew I could handle this battle. And me and my family, because we're still talking about my parents. I mean, they just, I know they're praying for me every single day. I pray about this all the time. And it's like, I truly believe. I asked God so many times, why did I end up of all schools end up coming here? Like I wanted to go somewhere where I could just be happy and enjoy volleyball. Why put me here? Why did this happen to me? And I truly believe at the end of the day that this is the reason I ended up here because I believe God gives his hardest battles to his strongest warriors. And I'm just going to have to believe that this is the reason I was here was because he knew I could handle this. So I've had the best support from my parents through all of this. Where's your family from? We're from Dallas, Texas. Okay, nice. I love, I love that area visited last year. Yeah. Um, have, have you always been a person who's outspoken because I always have, like if I was to go back to like sixth grade or something, I would be the, the same person making a commotion about something as I am now right today, trying to make a commotion about this for good reasons. I think, have you always been a person who's been outspoken? Have you always felt that you should be the one if there's a crowd of people who are not speaking up? Yes. I, I just feel like I've always felt the need to be able to back people who are scared to say it for themselves. And especially just being in sports my entire life, like I've been okay with voicing my opinion that other people don't really want to talk about. 
and saying the things that are uncomfortable, but that are the better for the betterment of the team. So I feel like that's also prepared me a lot to be able to be put in this situation because there's already been so many other times in my life where I've needed to be the person to say the uncomfortable things, mm -hmm. a setter on the team. You're kind of the person that has to say, cut the crap, Let, this is what we're doing. So I do think that's probably prepared me a lot too to be able to be in a situation that I am in now. I feel you on that. I am always reminded of something my brother told me that maybe will help you is that some people have to take the uh, the gravelly dirt road to get to the destination while other people can enjoy the scenic route. And that's something he told me when I was like 19 or something like that and ca causing a ruckus somewhere. And he said, you know, you, you might be saying the right thing and people might be thinking that you're, uh, you're too outspoken or something like that. But basically it means somebody needs to say something sometimes. And I yeah. think that's the situation. And you mentioned little girls and younger athletes coming up. There are situations where it's even uh, it, it's even further than what you're dealing with. Already in Canada, there's been a 50-year-old man swimming against 14-year-old girls. So it can get out of control extremely fast. And I, and I want everything to work out here for you, especially now in the NIL days. Um, this is something where you should be able to be focused on you know, uh, branding opportunities and figuring out what you're going to be doing once you're uh, done at SJSU. But instead, you're being forced to do this. And I believe um, I believe what you're saying is that, you know, somebody's got to do it. And if you're the person that's got to do it, then you're the person that's got, that got to do it. Um, yeah. Have You know, I know you said you don't want to speak on other people's behalf, but do you, uh, it's hard to ask this, but do you think other people are going to join you? Are you hopeful? Or do you think that it's pretty much settled that you're going to be the one? I definitely don't want to speak on other people's behalfs, but I feel like there could potentially be more in the future, hopefully. But also that's just decisions that everyone has to make for themselves. And mm -hmm. that, like, especially for me, like deciding to do this, it was like, I had my parents' support, but this was a decision I needed to make for myself because I do believe if this is something you're not fully in on, then don't do it because, I don't know, at the end of the day, I hope that more people can join, but you never know. It's other people's, that's a question you'd probably have to ask other people because I can't answer that for them. Yeah, and I'm hoping that there isn't going to be I think the, the, the hate waves are becoming less and less for these sort of things. People have sort of gotten bored of cancel culture, I feel like. The other teams that have um, pulled out of matches, did, did, uh, did the coaching staff or, or the athletic program tell you guys why? Did they, did they make a point of mentioning it? Or it's just like, oh, that game's canceled. Um, they sit us down and they tell us what they're told. I think we all know the reason why they're told. <laughs> But yeah, we're sat down and we're told like, this game is canceled. We won't be playing anymore. This is when we're like, this is when the next practice is moving on. Any questions, any comments? So it is a team discussion. They're not hiding when a game gets canceled, but it's definitely not an easy pill to swallow either. Like we had our meeting when Boise canceled and that's just like another game that I'm not gonna be able to play my senior year, which I think is the hardest part. So, yeah, but I mean, I fully support Boise and their decision not to play us. If I was in their shoes, I would most likely do the same thing. So it's like, you can't really be mad, you know, mm -hmm. like. Oh, did oh, we sorry. lose you? That's okay. Brooke, this has got to be, I know you said nothing's changed, but this has got to be, you're getting pulled in for meetings about, feelings you're getting in pulled in for game cancellations that shouldn't happen this has probably never happened to you correct me if i'm wrong throughout your high school and other years of college is this uh do you is, predict a boiling point for this team and i don't want to make this be like uh <laughs> i don't want to make this be like journalist uh pushes you into answering something uh oh <sighs> oh we don't have you right now but is this have your uh, video right now oh sorry that's okay is this going to be something that 
causes a problem, do you think? How many games are left in the season? Well, we just had our first game against Fresno, like in season play last week. So that was our first game. So our second game of the season got canceled. And that was going to mm -hmm. be our home opener. So that was also really sad. But we're so we have a while to go. And we don't know what's going to happen. Yeah, this is going to be a wild ride for you. Uh, I know it's early on, just a few days out of uh, the announcement here. But, uh, I mean, maybe this is going to be a situation where so many people are talking about this enough that you're not going to you're not going to feel the brunt of everything. And I hope not. And I hope that things don't go wrong in this team. I hope the person in question, whomever that may be, will do the right thing. And I hope that uh, I don't want this to be a stain on your final season. And I don't want this uh, run you guys are on to, to, you know, have an asterisk next to it, if you know what I'm saying about that. And uh, is there anything else you want to say? Any other message you want to get over there? How do you feel mm -hmm. like, I was just going to add, do you feel like the school is doing enough? I really don't want to speak on the school. I will say as much as it does hurt to not be able to play in these games and they're getting canceled and it's taking like taking off another game of my senior season, a lot of our girls first year of college volleyball, like that would have been their second in NCAA division one game ever. So to like take that away, like I said, it's a really hard pill to swallow. But on the other hand, it's like people are finally standing up and doing something and make wanting to make a change. And I think that's like, just take yourself out of our shoes and see like the good things that are happening, I think is amazing. Like, I think it's amazing that Boise was able to step down and not play us. Like, that's taking a stand in the right direction, in my opinion. So as much as we can talk about, like, yes, I'm not going to lie, it sucks that I didn't get to play in a game this season and that it did take away a game from me playing in this season. But also reiterating, like, it's so much more than just, like, the people that are in it. Like, and like I'm saying, I don't want my kids in the future to have to play against this. I don't want anyone right now to have to play against this, if that makes sense. So. It just sucks that I'm in the situation daily, but I'm excited that people are finally taking a stand and actually doing something about it. So I feel like there's hope there. Well, there is a lot of hope. And I think, you know, I talk about like cancel culture and, and free speech and stuff a lot. And the last six months to a year, we've progressed so much as, you know, a Western society in, in being able to speak out more about these things. And I think what you'll find is, if you do get attacked for this, that it will be over fairly quickly. I mean, I was recently attacked for like three days for, you know, tweeting about wrestling. So I don't know <laughs> how, how, how serious it can, it, that's how serious you can get about that. Um, but yeah, I think that uh, you will find that as long as you weather the storm, you will come out better on the end. That's my sage advice as a yeah. person who never played. This is the, wa the watch of time of my life that never played. <laughs> in the NCAA. Gosh, yeah. I mean, it's crazy, but hopefully this is just something that can make a change. That's all I want at the end of the day. It's so much more than just like my situation. It's just my story gets to be told and hopefully help make a change. And that's what hopefully is going to happen soon with this lawsuit is protecting women. That's it. Turn it up, Jordan.